Welcome to Palette Expanders. We're in episode four, and we're here to taste even more meads that are mystery meads for us both. Let's get started. Okay. I'm hype. So, it's been so long since we've done one of these. It's been it's been hours <laughs> since we've done one. <laughs> so uh, we have two mystery meads. If you haven't watched this uh, series. BC and I both bring meads to each other that we don't share the information about and we taste test them in an attempt to figure out what we brought. And it's a way for us to um, expand our palates, aka the name of the show, but also for us to talk about the different vocabulary and uh, just kind of go through the tasting process. And this is something that you should do with your own meads and your friends' meads mm -hmm. and wines and beers and all that stuff. So. Here we are. Let's do it. So we're gonna go ahead and pour these suckers and then we're gonna get to taste it. I'm excited. Um, okay, so we've gone ahead and poured them and per usual, we normally have varying colors. Yeah, yours yeah, is, that's becoming a thing, isn't it? Yours is the gold, nice, uh, beer -esque steady, color to steady me. Steady stream of bubble, bubbles coming up. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. A little carbonation. Mine's not carbonated, mine's okay. still. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and start with mine this time. Okay, How I like that. that. Let's get a nose nose on mine. So that color is very <sighs> caramel. Yes. I haven't tasted little, this one in a, quite some time. Little orange hue to it. Mm -hmm. Whoa. There's definitely caramel on the nose, too. Not much burn, not a lot of heat. Oh, we didn't also explain. Here's what I brought. Oh, this yeah. is what BC has brought. We normally do that, so as we're tasting, you can... Uh, you can get certain vibes from what we're getting. Or not. <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> it definitely smells... Uh, it definitely smells roasty, caramely, a little malty. Again, not a lot of heat. It's almost got a... a not like a char, but like a toasted woody kind of mm -hmm. aromatic. Like like if you've ever done wood burning, like, a, like, oh, like yeah. an art project. It's uh -huh. got a little bit that. of that in there hot wood not like yeah. burned wood there's a little kind of blanket of acid sitting on top but it doesn't like indicate to me that this is going to be sour mm -hmm. or punchy i feel like the honey character here is not super mm -hmm. prevalent there's all everything you're describing is like covering up honey aroma for me yeah I, yeah and and that is not to say like i don't know i haven't tasted this i don't know uh -huh. it, it could be a boche and that could be why I'm not experiencing honey, mm -hmm. but the the florals or that like that classic honey bear smell, I'm not picking up any of the honey. Yeah. In that way, on here, man, mm -hmm. there's something going on there that I recognize. You okay. know what? It, it smells like a, a a little bit like a peaty whiskey. Okay. It's yeah. got a peatiness I to get it. That. I think that's what's confusing me. So in my younger days, when I was brewing real bad homebrew. I was drinking a lot of, like, whiskey, yeah. scotch, that kind of... And so, there was, like, a brief period of time where I had a lot of whiskey and scotch vernacular that I have just lost <laughs> over the years. It is. So you have to keep it up. That's the challenging <laughs> thing. Like, your palate, you have to continuously do mm -hmm. it. You don't just... I mean, some ways you can remember things. This does have some really nice, uh, like, peaty scotch kind of aromatics in there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I wish okay. I had a little more honey aroma, but... Yeah. Let's go to yours. It's gonna be different for sure. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I I immediately had something in my head and then it just went. Don't whew, gone. Don't inhale too hard, because I just did. What is that? Ooh! <laughs> yeah. a spice. That's a spice for yeah. sure. That's a <laughs> there it's there's a little something little little uh, pepper right around, right around that carbon dioxide around in there. Yeah, but it's like it's got this um what's that? The base aroma. There's the bright, like, punch you in the face mm -hmm. uh, pepper, assumedly, smell that I'm getting. But then there's this uh, nice, like, warmth before that that is is uh, mellow. It's, there's mellowness to it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's like a... It feels like a bright fruit, maybe pineapple-y, maybe tropical-ish. Okay. Yeah, I get more bright. Uh, yeah, getting that. <laughs> it really, Got me right here. It really rides. It socked me right in the face. <laughs> Really rides the the CO two. Yeah, it's uh, on its way out of the glass. It's definitely I get uh, um, 
tropical, bright tropical fruit. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking pineapple, but I, obviously that's just off the nose. Okay. Let's start with yours. I think that oh. that'll be a better progression okay. for things. <laughs> that's ominous. Okay. Well, that's not a bad thing. I just think that no one, having an idea of what yours is, I don't know. Okay. I think okay. it'd be hard to switch back. Ooh, yeah. That's got some... What oh, What is this honey? What I've had a similar honey to this before. I bet you have. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of really... Um, it's very smooth. The, the, the combination of the pepper heat, whatever whatever kind of pepper it was, and the uh, carbonation it really gets you back here. kind of slides down and fist fights on the way down. Yeah. But, I, I, I understand that you're a pepper head a mm-hmm, little bit. Mm-hmm. So... I've shared some of my hot sauce with you in oh, the past. I, yeah, I need I need more of that, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a I'll summertime, pay you handsomely for that one. Summertime outdoor project. Right. You don't want to cook that mm-hmm. inside your house. And so I thought this might be an interesting one yeah. to, uh, I still, to get um, your take on. You dried some peppers. I still have those peppers I need to use. Yeah. Gosh, I cannot put my finger on the type of honey this is, which is frustrating me because it, it feels very familiar. <laughs> it feels very fruity. And I'm getting... No, it's not. Is this metal foam? It's got cotton candy-ish. It's got... Weird. So, are you identifying that there are... There is a distinct... I mean, clearly there's a there's some kind of pepper in here. Yes, that's, there's a pepper. This is not hidden. No. At all. But are, is, are you identifying that there are other distinct flavors in there beyond the pepper? Yes. So I, the honey, you think, is... Pepper. I think the honey is... It, I do get some meadow foamy... That, the... Uh, uh, Cotton candy, the not fake sugar vibe, but there's that weird marshmallowy side that a meadow foam can get. But I could be also confusing that with bright um, tropical fruity flavors of some sort. That I think those two. Mm. So do you think that there is fruit and honey? Is that where you're trying to yeah. jive yeah. on the palate? I'm trying to deliberate between the two to say is this fruit um, or is yeah. this a got it. Uh, different kind of honey. It's really good. I will say that. And, and I'm starting to really dig deep. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of uh, acid bite. It's pretty round itself. The bite, mm-hmm. the hit is from the, ca- the whatever it was, kind of pepper. I'm assuming yeah. habanero or something like that. But um, I don't know enough about different peppers to say that this is a jalapeno or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to just say pepper. Well, and it's very tough. Um because typically in mead you're using dried peppers, yeah. so it's even tougher sometimes I think to get the nuance of a mm-hmm. pepper variety, mm-hmm. because mostly what you're getting is the heat yes. and and that that pepper flavor, but not necessarily like you know habanero is fruity. It's mm-hmm. it's like biting into a, a hot berry. Yeah. Versus a jalapeno is vegetable and mm-hmm. and kind of grassy. That's a good thing to point out too. If anybody's not a side note, but if you're making a mead with Peppers, it, it, like you're saying, it's better to do it dried. Mm-hmm. Um, I've experimented and done jalapenos <laughs> before and ended up with like, this is, tastes like bell pepper. And mm-hmm. we, it's just like the, the capsaicin leaves and it's, you're left with weird peppery, non, non-peppery characters. Mm. Should we? Yeah, let's, let's go on to the, yeah. the I'll, other I'll realm. Keep... As this has opened up and breathed a little bit, yeah, I feel like we should be drinking a glass of milk. Uh, the toffee, caramel, roasty notes are coming out even more. Yeah. It may have been a bad idea to start with mine. Because I a little bit can't feel my tongue. (laughs) 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 That may be right. Yeah, that would have been. I was thinking because this one has such a different, I don't Mm. know, maybe. I could have been wrong. I was probably wrong, but it's okay. It's okay. Part of the, part of the charm. Part of the charm really get some of that the village Oklahoma tap water across my tongue. Yeah. I forgot how um, minerally it is over here versus the other side We're of the We're living city. the dream. We're getting our minerals <laughs> straight in. I mean, yeah, you're you're gonna not get osteoporosis, that's for sure. Thank you, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you. <laughs> also a great time to point out that, you know, you might check your, your water chemistry when brewing with your tap water. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, you go spend the dollar for a gallon if you're, yeah. if you're in a ghetto area. <laughs> I'm really having to discern on this. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Uh-huh. The nose is, is definitely... 
Mm-hmm. Well, then the those sweetness. communicates more sweetness than what you get on the palate. It tastes burnt a little bit, though. There's like a like a real molasses dark, like sorghum, hmm. sticky yeah. kind of quality to it that's like real... I mean, it just really coats your tongue in a bitter, not tannic bitter, but like mm-hmm. a bitter, burned. I mean, immediately I want to say it's it's some kind of there's some some caramelized honey in here or something caramelized in here, because it just has a real carbony kind of quality. What do you mean by carbony? What's your what do you get from that? I mean, like burned. Like, have you ever uh, thrown a slice of pizza? in the pan and because you're just you're just trying to crisp that crust back up and you, mm. you get distracted for a minute you come back and the pan is smoking yeah and it's not a bad thing necessarily but it's got a I mean you've blackened the bottom of your yeah. slice of pizza and it's just got that like uh, that yeah, burnt you flavor yes which isn't necessarily a bad thing I don't feel like it's a it's a flaw in here but it is a dominant flavor mm-hmm the acid is 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 about where I thought it was gonna be. Uh-huh. It's not bright. It's not. It is round. There's a roundness to the acid profile, but there's not like a a pop that tells me that you use lemons or grapefruits or anything in that in that realm. I really don't want to believe that you've done anything to to add acid to this. I will say it's um very the body on it, and I I use this all the time, and I say it, and I feel like it's a cop out answer, but. I think of the world of tannin. Like, mm. is it juice, juicy, or is it uh, tannic? Is is the wrong word to use there? But when you think juicy, it doesn't have any like it just kind of dissipates real fast. Mm-hmm. So there's no there's no clinging to me. There's a little bit of a bright uh, astringency and clinging, but it's not like a like a stick around mouth feel clinging. Mm-hmm. Would, like you get with uh, something that's oaked or has wine tannin in it or has fruit skins that have provided the wine tannin. Yeah, I don't pick up any any notable tannin. There's almost a little bit of a banana thing happening in there. I almost want more banana flavor in here. I don't know what's. <laughs> I don't know if that's you know something that the yeast contributed to this uh-huh. because it just has a little bit of that like like if you push a half a bison strain of yeast too mm. far into the heat. You, know, you get it up to 80, 85 degrees. Sometimes you can get those like bubblegummy banana mm-hmm. kind of flavors. And so I'm, a, I'm picking up a little bit of that. And it's almost to the point where like if there was a little bit more, this would like nail it as a banana's foster. Yeah. Because uh-huh. you have that toffee and that burnt flavor. Yeah. Just Ooh. a little bit more banana flavor in there. Banana foster. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I want to say that those banana flavors are coming from something that the yeast has thrown off. Well, let's let's go and make some. If you're ready. Yeah, I'm, I I can be ready. Let's let's start with mine since we're fresh off of it. What do you? What's your vibe? What do you? Feeling? I think this is like a three hour boche. Uh, mm-hmm. Then that's it. I don't I don't know. I I can't identify anything. I mean it it just those those toffee caramely. And like burnt biscuity notes just stick to my tongue yeah. in a way where I can't ferret out any other flavor. You don't have, there's no um, honey character, per, uh, a retained honey character from any, even clover honey, clo- uh, wildflower honey, or any other wild variety. I'm just not picking up a honey flavor. There, a yeah, that's what I mean. Is there's, there's nothing there. It's just you get that caramelized side. So no, there's there's a little bit of that bittering that you get with a dryish mead that I I believe possibly incorrectly comes from like the pollen and then mm-hmm. and the stuff that's in the nectar when they make the honey. But I don't like I'm not like oh wow this is a wonderful <laughs> orange blossom tradition. You used honeycomb in this, yeah, didn't you? <laughs> there's, there's none of that. It it is just it it is like a, a like a hard. A hard caramel, mm-hmm. like a like a peanut brittle kind of hard, hmm. interesting, burnt caramel kind of flavor. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, but I think I might want the, I think I might want the alcohol content to go a little higher in this, and then throw an ice cube in it. 
Mm-hmm. So you're getting yeah, it's more more whiskey esque. That's mm-hmm. like a, yeah, mm-hmm. I can get that. It's yes, this this is definitely in all the meads I've ever had. This is more akin to a like a whiskey kind of flavor profile, a peaty scotchy whiskey, than than it is a mead. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I like it, but I kind of want it to burn me a little bit. <laughs> Not not the way this yeah. one does. <laughs> oh man, I'm already thinking of the graphics I'm gonna throw in for these things. <laughs> yes. All right, yours. Speaking of burning, um, <laughs> yours yeah. is definitely a uh, capsicum oil of some sort. I'm thinking, I I cannot specify what specific peppers, but I still. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I really. <laughs> I was not ready. Not ready for that. <laughs> it really carries on the. Uh, oh yeah. On the Coming pepper. off the. Um, yeah. Woo. Uh, this is one that I maybe left uh, the the pepper in a little too. I still get a meadow foamy that uh, whatever little classification of honey would uh-huh. be meadow foam in that world. This I can't remember what the other ones are that are like that, but it's got that kind of weird sugar taste to it. Um, and the pepper, which again we don't know. And I I think that's it. I was going with the the pineapple and and those sides, but. I, I don't, my brain is having a hard time saying, is it pepper? Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, is it honey or is it fruit? There could very well be fruit in it. And I still get some of those pineapple-y vibes, but there's also like a weird sugariness that I get from the honey that makes me think maybe that's that's the bright sugar note. So I'm going to firmly say, and probably be wrong, pepper, meadow foam honey, this thing feels hot, uh, and maybe it's the heat from it, but it feels heavier than your session meads you've made, so I'm thinking it's like a 9 percenter. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's just the heat from the, the pepper, but again, there could very well be some fruit in here, but maybe my brain is just flipping it around. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll start with yours. What'd you bring? So, this is a tapache made as a mead. Mm-hmm. It had a ghost pepper for, I think, like two days. Yeah. Which maybe one day would be (laughs) more appropriate. There's, It wasn't this hot when it was fresh. And like I I said at the beginning, I forgot about this. Uh So this has been sitting for a while, and I think that capsaicin has just elevated quite a bit. Yeah, that's... that's, I mean, I've noticed that with capsaicin, um, I think hotter peppers rise, little, like jalapenos, for whatever reason, the, the pepper... Heat to me dissipates mm-hmm. and you get more vegetable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and it was a dried pepper, it was just one. Yeah, and, and it might have been, if I recall, a half a pepper. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But clearly, it came through. This uh, used whole pineapples in this batch. So other than the top and the bottom, all the rest of the pineapple went in. So the skins and everything. Yeah. And then the honey, that you're trying to suss out, was coffee blossom honey that you gave me. There's that's weird. I don't get the same when I think the coffee blossom. There's a, <laughs> like a roasty side to it that I don't get as much here. See, I thought it was a little bit marshmallowy, a little bit like mm. kind of fruity, but kind of vanilla forward. Um, not as much as a meadow foam. Yeah, meadow foam hits you in the face with there, those I marshmallow get, Maybe flavors. I do think it's that pineapple combination with maybe what you're saying the the coffee blossom character that is like pointing towards meadow foam foam to mm-hmm. me. So the pineapple has died down quite a bit in this. Yeah, as I can well get as, the pineapple, but again, my brain is like, is it pineapple? Is it meadow foam? What's you, happening you, here? If you can get past the capsaicin, you can smell pineapple on the nose. I also, part of me when I was saying that was like, I don't think he would make, uh, not that you wouldn't do this, but make oh, a, a... Don't challenge me. A pep, uh, meadow foam and pepper meat. I, I think, it, leave it at that. I think there's a part of me that's like, I don't know. If, I'm sure you will now. Now but. I will. <laughs> Previously, that'll, that'll come up on Bruise Lab. <laughs> yeah, there we coming go. soon. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's interesting. Typically, tapache doesn't age this long. This uh-huh. is several months old. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically, you would you you clear through a batch of tapache, you know, as soon as it's bottle conditioned. Yeah. And so it's interesting to to. This is the only bottle of the hot stuff that I have left. Mm. And so I had a bottle of the other stuff and I was like, oh, the funkiness of this has died down. Cause yeah. you usually get some funkiness from the, the microbes that are on the skin of the pineapples. All of that has vanished in this one. Mm-hmm. And so it is, it's, it's really good. I really, like it's not it. bad. I would, and, and I feel like part yeah, I of think, the problem I think with, this was better young, but it's not bad. I, I think it's, it I think it's good. What's the percentage on this? Cause it feels big. It should be in the range of five and a half to six. It feels big to me. 
But I think it's the heat from the yeah, the alcohol, the not the alcohol, the um, capsaicin. Yeah. Oof, getting me now. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what the hell this is. This one's this one's but you nailed it actually. It's just a straight up buffet. Okay. Okay. Now, um, and I got to remember what kind of honey I used. I want to know specifically how long you went on this one. This this one was only about an hour and fifteen hour and thirty minutes. This is the first. Okay, that's a long buffet time. Yes, I, I mean, normally go an hour. A lot of mine, I do thirty minutes. Um, this is my first boche I ever made. Oh, this is three years over three years old now, and I have mm. about maybe one more bottle of this hiding in storage. Um, and I, I wanted, I was excited for it because I was like, I sat on this. I'm like, I'm gonna do it, and bring it out. It's just a straight up boche. Use the EC one 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 eight. It is at about fourteen percent. I can't remember. I'll put the recipe, all the stuff. Mm. Same thing for yours, uh, of mm. course. And it's just been sitting for a long time. And I love Boches yeah. for, for what you described, which is whiskey character, that, mm-hmm. that um, spirits side mm-hmm. that comes out of caramelizing honey. Did you back sweeten this? No. Okay. I no, like that. I didn't I, back I like the all. sweetness on this. If this was any more sweet, it would it would like borderline on on a fault. Mm-hmm. But I like where this is at. Yeah, I do um, think even putting an ice cube in this would still be really good. Like, yeah, it'd be yeah. watered down a little I mean, bit. I want it to be a little bit boozier. Yeah. Like, like if you could eke this up to like 18%, mm-hmm. because what's weird about it is typically alcohol burn in a mead is seen as like a fault of like, mm-hmm. oh, you need to age that out. But I want more of that with this. I want it to, like, I want it Because it hits the spirit side. You mm-hmm. want, that's, this is more, and I've said it, I still say to this day, every time I make it, I try and accomplish more of a uh, whiskey character yeah. each time with my Boches because I love mm. whiskey. I think it's great. So Yeah, you've you've really, I know this is your first and it's aged for a while, but you've really nailed the peatiness mm-hmm. and the richness, those toffee notes, without there being anything in there that's really, like, glaring. Yeah. Like I said, there's not a, there's not an acidity in there that makes me go... Why is why why is that there? Yeah, uh, this is really nice. I will say that the one lesson, the lesson I learned from this and and what I do now with my bochets, I do two thirds generally bochet honey, mm-hmm. and then one third non bochet, and I think that that would actually help pronounce more of the yeah. floral character of the honey, which was clover honey. So I mean, it's mm-hmm. not very great, but. If you're using something real like meadow foam, you know you don't want to burn all of the meadow right. foam away. You want right. to retain. So, I, I that's what I would do if I was making a boche again, which I make them a lot. I I try to keep a, a portion of the original honey in. You know, as this opens up, yeah, I don't pick it up on the nose, but as it opens up on the palate, I get a little bit of that honey character. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Like if there was. Almost like if you just did this as is and then back sweetened with just a, a smidge of honey. Mm-hmm. So you get, a, I mean, not enough sweetness to make it cloying, but enough to like reintroduce some of that honey character. That could be nice. But overall, this is, this is killer. I, you know, if I could, if I had more, all of my bouquets are three years old. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. I would love to. Uh, I, I would I'm kind of jealous of this. I'm going to go make some more bow <laughs> I mean, yeah. You I made one like... recently, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, BC, again, curveballs. We're, we're throwing new things in every this single episode. This is definitely, like, if I went to a bar, these aren't, like, this wouldn't be my first and second drink I would order. Uh, <laughs> I will say that this episode. That's what's really interesting about this, this concept. Yes. And this episode, I didn't try to murder you. I know that that, yeah. that happened last time. And yeah, a huge hospital bill. I, 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 I was going for it. Taking this guy to court, actually. <laughs> so if you want to see what happened, how I almost tried to murder him, go check out episode three. But uh, this has been episode four. We'll be back with more. If you have any notes on what you like about this, don't like, let us know down below. We want to, of course, as YouTubers, as, as people who care yes. about what we do, want to continue to grow and make better content. And you guys are a big part of that. We don't know everything, so we're here to learn, just like hopefully you are. I hope you've enjoyed this. BC, this has hey, been fun. Cheers, man. I'm, cheers I'm, you. I'm very hype about both of these, Oh yeah. honestly. We'll be back with more. Make more mead. See you then. Cheers. Mm-hmm.